in a period of about little more than 50 years between the 870s and the 920s, the old geography of Anglo-Saxon England broke down and was replaced by a single kingdom of all the English. The catalyst for all that was the Viking invasions and the chief mover in all that was the Kingdom of Wessex under Alfred the Great. Alfred reigned for the best part of 30 years from 871 until 899 and it was very much to his credit that during the 880s he um, was responsible for the reform, the regeneration, the sort of rebuilding, almost the reinvention of his kingdom. Alfred's achievements as a ruler are, are really astonishing. He's a great war leader and a battle winner and a conductor of campaigns and an organiser of military power. He's a, um, a great organiser of the kingdom, constructing fortresses and with a strategic eye to the future. But I think it's the cultural project that is the most wonderful to our eyes and the most extraordinary, especially given the fact that he was probably illiterate at the point when he became king. Learning in England had collapsed under the Viking invasions, uh, literacy had collapsed, the ability to write even English, let alone Latin. We know about the programme mainly because we have the Old English preface to the translation of Pope Gregory's pastoral care, in which he um, sets out his plan for the revival of the English language and the translation of books which are most necessary for all men to know from Latin into English. It's important to recognise that at the beginning of the 870s, when he first became king, Alfred was just king of the West Saxons and of the men of Kent. It's then in the 880s that Alfred comes to be known by a different title, King of the Anglo-Saxons, and it was that position and title which he seems to have bequeathed to his son, Edward the Elder. It's important, therefore, that when Athelstan came to the throne in 924, and perhaps when he was crowned in 925, he seems to have been crowned King of the Anglo-Saxons. However, it was um, Athelstan's own achievement within a few years of his coronation that he uh, then came to be known as King of the English. So many crucial things in the makeup of English and British culture uh, th their roots lie back in the Anglo-Saxon period. So I'd say it was a transformative and a crucially formative period in the history of the British Isles and especially in the history of the English state and the English people.